at a uh, new modification I've done to the Ambira Devika uh, character hip rig. So these are the characters I have on Gumroad. If you want to support me, please go grab one of these characters. You could even use them to follow along if you would like to you know, follow along at home while I do this. So the idea here is I uh, wanted the hip rig to um, deform correctly in poses like this, where uh, her legs are way up, where her knee is way up by her chest. Uh, this pose for her had a problem earlier where there was a fairly big gap here between the, her hip and her thigh. Uh, currently, as you can see, there's not a gap and we're about to find out why when we look at how this uh, hip rig is set up. So let us take a look at what we've got here. We have four bones. Um, there are only four bones of interest here and there are these in this line. This red bone down here, this green bone here, this red bone up here, and then this uh, gray bone. The bone that is left over from the original hip rig is this red bone up here. Uh, these other three bones are in addition, and then this uh, red bone doesn't have constraints on it before like it did before. If you look at the uh, original hip tutorial I did, you'll see that this uh, has a constraint. I've removed that constraint. I've added a bone that this is a child of that is a copy location of this one. <coughs> this bone also is left over from the original hip rig, but this was stretching to the uh, hip bone. Now I have it stretching to this special gray bone that I call the uh, death hip tendon stretch target um, bone. And so what happens is this this original thing that was stretching, or it was a stretch to constraint to the hip, now is stretching to this hip tendon stretch target L, but it's uh, the where it is on the head or tail is a driver, and this driver uh, takes it from the head to the tail of the bone depending on how much the uh, controller, the thigh controller is rotated on its local x-axis, and that is as it's rotating forward and back, right? So if I, and then I guess let's take a look at how this works. If I grab her leg and start rotating it forward, what we're going to notice is that this red bone here travels from the bottom of this gray bone all the way up to the top of the gray bone, then this green bone travels from the bottom up about a quarter of the way. So let's, let's take a look and watch that. So here we can see that red bone starting to travel up, travel up, travel up. Now it's stretching to the very top of the gray bone. That green bone you can see went from the went from the bottom up about a quarter of the way. Uh, and then as I keep rotating, keep rotating, keep rotating, the the point, uh, you know, the human explanation of what we want here is that this bone here is causing rotation of kind of the upper part of her thigh. And so at this angle, it is essentially the center of its rotation is essentially way up here above her hip. And then as it goes down, the center of rotation is way down here below her hip. And as it rotates back, you can see the leg is kind of rotating back. That geometry is rotating around this point all the way down here. And then again, if I do it up here, it's rotating around this point up here. So the other thing to note is that as I'm uh, rotating this leg, this bone here that we call the uh, deaf hip bone, it is actually responsible for all that kind of mass in front of the hip. The, the uh, muscle, the fat, the tissue, the tendon, like all that needs to move along with um, the rotation of her leg. So let's take a look at that again. So as you can see, this whole mass moves up a bit, like, and it's being moved up by this bone, which is kind of taking care of all this mass down here, and this bone, which is taking care of all the mass up here. So that may, the, the hip bone itself doesn't move, obviously, when, when this uh, action happens, but all that other mass that's in front of it does move a bit, and it's probably moving a bit too much, but uh, this does take care of uh, a lot of the more extreme deforms and makes them look better than what we had before. So I'll probably tweak this uh, at some point in the future when I do, maybe I'll make another video about it. But for now, this is what we got. Uh, the other bones that we see here, mm, wow, that looked awful. The other bones that we see here, these two, I'm just kind of keeping for reference. These were part of the uh, hip rig before, I guess so. Actually, all these red bones were part of the hip rig before, but uh, these two bones are now acting differently. Okay, so let's look at the constraints and drivers we have on here. So this one has no constraints or drivers. It's just the child of deaf hip L. Deaf hip L I've got hidden right now. It's just a bone here uh, that is a child of the spine. So there's a spine here, goes to a hip, goes to this thing. And so that if she rotates her uh, hips, then this will rotate along. So next up is this deaf hip bone L. If you remember watching the last hip uh, rig, uh, tutorial I did. This one had some constraints. It rotated along with the thigh. I'm removing those constraints entirely. No constraints at all. It's just a child of the hip follows tendon L um, bone. This is the MCH hip follows tendon L bone right here. 
it actually has a constraint on it. It copies the location of this red bone here. This is our uh, def hip front correct L. Uh, this copies the front of def hip, def hip front correct L. It copies it with an influence of 0.25 in the pose space. And so uh, that is why when this thing, when the red bone moves all the way to the top, this one only moves a quarter of the way to the top because it's only got a quarter influence. The final thing, of course, is this stretch to bone, which pay attention to these details. Basically, um, as it is in its rest pose, it touches the, the bottom of this bone. That way I can uh, you know, have it stretch to the head tail at a strength of one here. And then it, as I mentioned earlier, we've got this driver that is on the X rotation. So that's the whole setup. Uh, we kind of, uh, it does do some pretty nice deforms. Uh, again, I'm pretty happy with this and, and the way it looks. And uh, so yeah, if you want to have some nice looking hips on your character, this is one good way to go about it. Thanks for watching. Oh, I guess I should note that uh, in a bit, I'm going to make another video. Uh, it'll just be a kind of walkthrough as we watch me doing the same thing to the other character, which is Lily the Classica. Lily the Classica is the next one here. Right now, her hip does have the old, um, the old setup that I did from my earlier tutorial. It is not, it is missing this setup, and so I'm going to go ahead and rig that up uh, live so that you can see uh, my thought process and where I end up putting bones and and where I parent them and all the things that I do. So, uh, you know, not stick around. I'm not, I'm not gonna stick in this video, but you know, go find that video if you'd like to see me uh, set this up in another character.